Hey, this is Casey. And Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime mm-hmm. number 193. <laughs> um, I missed that cue, didn't I? Yeah, well, we're getting up there. <laughs> 200's coming up. Maybe we'll do something special wow. for 200. Um, but uh, this is our live show that we do where we want to talk to you guys. We want to kind of get your questions, answer them, maybe give you guys a couple of things that we think are going to help you become a better, better basketball player. Um, we got Philip Cohn saying, hi guys, what's up, hey, Philip? how you doing, Philip? Um, but we, uh, we would like to take this time to really have office hours with you guys. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to have a, or if you want to watch a video that's a short little quick tutorial that is a breakdown or whatever, you can find those on our channel too, but yeah. those are in our library. This is for the people that want to kind of have a sit down with us and talk about this stuff. All right. Uh, yeah. We got Dan Dabrowski. Dan, you're early, man. Yeah, awesome. Great. Uh, Retro Movies and Games says, hey guys, what's up? And Rika May Alave says, Ayo. Ayo. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. Um, well, that's like uh, Jim McMahon. Oh, okay. Or not Jim McMahon. Uh, Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. Um, Ayo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kevin Kolev, our buddy from, from Ireland. Oh, he's watching from Bulgaria, though. Oh, that's really? That's pretty crazy. All right. Um, so we're here for you guys at this time. If you want to go check out the other videos, please go check those out. But... Uh, if you want to talk with us, we're here. Make sure you guys go follow us on all of our social media stuff. We are at Shot Science on everything, whether that's uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Snapchat. We do different things on all those different places, and we love having you guys there to check that stuff out. We talk about all things basketball, you know, and and you know, if you want to interact with us, that's where you do it. Um, and make sure you guys go to ShotScience.com where you guys can pick up the Shot Science official yeah. shirt, right. some of the other shirts that we got going on, the training gear that we have, the vertical jump training kit that you can get. Uh, we also have the all access membership area where you can uh, get the membership there and then check out our even more in depth tutorials than what we do on YouTube. Yeah. So if you wanna really learn about shooting, go there. If you wanna really learn about ball handling, if you really wanna get your athleticism up, that is the place to check out is all right. the all access area. Man, we got a lot of people rolling in here. Uh, Bats Place says, hi, guys. Thanks for all the great content. Greets from Belgium. All right. Awesome. Um, and then we have Bulldogs. Hello from sunny northern Michigan. We, you're all right. here all the time, too. Yeah. Uh, Dan Dabrowski now, and second. the Hats. I, I don't believe that Michigan is sunny. Well, it's summertime. Okay. Uh, Dan, uh, I think we told you. Get us, uh, give us an a email, and we'll try to hook you up with the Hats. Exactly. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Football Challenge 21 says, hi from Oklahoma. All right. Patanel says, hey from Italy. Awesome. We haven't even asked our question yet. I know, so. but everyone seems to know that's the question that's coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, quick hint. If you guys don't know, the question of the week is, where are you guys from in the world? We'll, we'll hit that again yeah. in our regular time that we ask that. But if you want to tell us where you're from, we will shout out people that tell us. Um, right. But let's jump into our topic for today. And while we're doing that, you guys are sending us your questions. So anything basketball related, shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, how to p- talk to your coach, uh, how to develop your athleticism, whatever it is, send it our way and we'll do our best to help you get through that. And maybe it's you're worried about a tournament that's coming up or you're worried about tryouts or you don't know how to approach a certain situation. We will help you guys figure that stuff out. So send those questions in. But our topic for today is which fingers for your shot or do you use for your shot to make it more accurate? Right. Because you have five of them on this one shooting hand <laughs> and you need to figure out which ones it needs to come off of to make it the most optimized, accurate shot. So where do we start on that one? Well, you know, the thing that is really important is maybe look at this like you're throwing a baseball. <coughs> uh, when we throw a baseball or I don't know about softballs, I don't know if you use the fingers the same way in softball, but throwing a baseball, you throw the fingers typically off these two fingers and the thumb, and that gives you accuracy as to where the ball is going to go. We include a third uh, 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 finger in this if it feels like it's okay. So we want to release the ball off of these two or these three fingers. Some these people's two are third, the most important, though. They are. The, some people's third finger is a little longer, and sometimes it gets involved. And as long as it doesn't disturb the uh, uh, flight of the ball on its way to the basket, you're looking good. So uh, what we want to do is... These two fingers here, as we release the basketball, they want to finish in that, that flexed position down toward the basket, and we want, to be, we want to put those two fingers right in the middle of the hoop. And what happens, we have one of the young men this morning, and 
hand turned to the outside, keep pulling a ball off to the side of the basket. Some people will take and turn the other way. Those two uh, situations have names. This is called super, or, uh, pronation, pronation, and this is supination. And what we want to do is we want flexion. We want the wrist and fingers to uh, uh, exercise flexion at the finish of the shot. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You want to finish towards your target. Yeah, if you're finishing exactly. somewhere else, that's where the ball is going to go. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And, you know, here's the other thing that's really important about those two fingers. And that is sometimes you'll run into people that say uh, it should just be that one finger that it comes yeah, off yeah, of or, um, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Yeah. But here's the thing. The reason why we want two fingers, and it's very similar to why with a baseball, if you're throwing a fastball, you're having it come off those two fingers is this, is that when you have one finger on the ball as the last release, you can see how unstable it is. And you can do this test too. You can hold the ball up and you can see the ball just rolls around because your finger is kind of a flat, roundish uh, pa pad for it to sit on sure. and the ball is round. So it's going to roll around on that thing. If you add in a second point of contact, all of a sudden you have so much more stability. Yeah. And so when, when you, that translates to the release on your ball, when you shoot it, that's going to make the ball that much more stable as it comes off your fingers and it's going to go where you want it to go more precisely than right. just with one finger. Yeah. And <laughs> what happens is that if you're just a tiny bit off on this release, that is only magnified by the time the ball gets to the basket. Yep. And that will lead to a less accurate shot. Right. So you have to make sure that when the ball is coming off, that it has these two points of contact. And it, you know, ultimately it may come off at the very end off of that one, but at the last two fingers that come off, it really comes off with those two points of contact. Right. Well, let's back up and let's talk about the other fingers too. Yep. yep. Well, that's not backing up. I think that okay. those, that is like the take home is what it we is. just did. It All is. that those stuff two that we fingers, just said. Absolutely. That's really key. And, and one of the ways, let's talk about how you achieve that too, is okay. that you have to have your hand spread com exactly. comfortably, not quint you know, trying to palm it or anything. I mean, you can see like I'm white knuckling it, just doing that. But you want to have a comfortable spread finger where your thumb is spread in opposition to your pinky. Right. Um, and so what that does is that keeps the ball up off of your palm and up on your finger pad. So you can do the one finger test and that fits in there. Yeah. It's not on your palm where you have no control. It's not up on your fingertips where you again have no control, but you have that f nice spread. Well, and the, when you come up on the release, it will come off basically off those fingers. Exactly. Anyway. Exactly, same fingers. But one of the other things that we would add there to that is that when we are uh, gripping the ball with that one finger space that Casey's talking about there, it allows the thumb and the little finger to grip the basketball. They are opposing one another, and so it makes it difficult for, or, or easy for them to, uh, uh, you don't want to squeeze the ball, but it gives you a nice grip. If the palm is, is laying, a ball lay, hmm, if the ball is lying flat on the palm of your hand and the thumb is up like this, you're not going to really have very much control at all because you're not gripping the ball. It's just lying in your hand right there. But it should be a nice, relaxed yeah. grip. Yeah. It shouldn't just be, ah, it should be really relaxed. Exactly, exactly right. And for people that are worried about not having big enough hands oh, and all that stuff, yeah. there are kids that you work oh, with yeah. all the time that yeah. are literally, they have the tiniest little hands you could yeah. ever imagine. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Oh. These kids are able to hold a basketball in the right place for shooting and get the ball off. Right. They can't grip it like this, but they <coughs> got it in a nice grip for the shot. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to palm it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, now, okay. So let's talk about the junkie fingers. All that right. You don't let's need to let's use. talk about the other fingers. As Casey <laughs> calls them the junkie fingers. And that is the fingers of the other hand. Oh, well that's, uh, that's a, that's another thing too. Okay. Uh, well, let's go back and let's stay on this one first. Yeah. I think the fingers you're talking about are the last three fingers here. And what happens is that when the ball finishes off the last three fingers, it means that your hand has supinated to the inside. I mean, it's the only way you can get that to happen if Ex you do that. Exactly. And, and the, one of the things that also causes it is this. Normally, we want to have our hand, so our index finger, uh, if the ball is a clock face, we want to have that finger pretty much pointed to the uh, 12 o'clock, okay? But what happens is that... As it's released. As it's released. 
Okay, and what happens oftentimes is when the elbow begins to turn out, yeah. so does my wrist turn, and that's when these fingers begin to become the release fingers, and that's when your accuracy goes in the tank right there. And here's here's some of the reasoning too behind that is that you know these fingers will do th several things. One of them is that they will make the ball spin like this, like yes, a corkscrew. And that is not the kind of spin that you want. You want to have that gentle backspin because that keeps the ball right there on the basket if it should hit right. the backboard or the rim. Right. If it has the side spin, that's going to make it corkscrew and it'll hit the, the rim or the backboard and it will kind of j not really go up the way that you want it to yeah. and die, but it will kick it out. Yeah. Um, the other thing is this, is that if you look at your hand, you will see that you have much more coordination and control over these fingers in, in opposition too than you do over these two outside fingers. These fingers, when it comes to kind of very fine movements and control, they do not compare to your index and your, your middle right, finger. Right. Um, so you do not want to have them in charge of the <laughs> controls of getting the ball to the basket. Exactly. Um, so that is one of the other reasons is that they, these fingers are kind of the, the, uh, the ones that, that can really get that fine focus on getting the ball in there. Right. You know, one of the things that, that <coughs> is such a common uh, practice for young players, too, is the pronation of the wrists to the outside. And what you notice here is that when I turn my hand like this, the ball actually is rolling off the outside of that index finger, and that causes some uh, that sideways spin too. But when we pronate, it tends to drag the ball to that side of the basket. And so yeah. we want those fingers to come right straight through so that they're dipped right in the middle of the hoop. That's where we're gonna have the best uh, uh, reaction. Okay, so let's talk about that other hand and the fingers on the yep. other hand. You know, um, for as long as I can remember, which has been a long time, Coaches, people, players uh, always refer to the offhand as your guide hand. Okay, we don't do that. And the reason we don't do that is because we find that the fingers of the, uh, um, uh, we call it the assist hand, and it's assisting the shooting hand to get ready to go, and then its role is pretty much finished. And what happens is that hand does not guide the basketball in any way, shape, or form. The longer the hand stays on there, the more negative effects you get from that hand. And it's, so, it's like a bad influence. It is. It is. And, and so that's why we don't use that terminology at all. We always talk about assist hand, and that is that, that off hand, this one over here, that is taking and helping us get the ball up and get it ready to go. Okay, and th so what happens as we pull it up and get ready to go and we start the stroke, the other hand will stay with it for a little bit and then it needs to release. And the reason that it wants to release is this, uh, and uh, there are probably a lot of people out there who maybe are watching and listening will find that they've had this problem, is that when you release the basketball, this thumb over here gives the ball a little swipe and it <coughs> leaves your hand. And what happens is this, is that little thumb, we call that a, a, a flick of the thumb, tends to shoot the ball to the right or shoot it to the left and not really very straight. What also happens out of it, it tends to change the rotation of the ball from true backspin to side spin. Well, it, it's, it's another variable yeah. that you that you don't yeah. have as much control over so yeah. one of the things we always talk about is shooting efficiency yeah and if you uh, are an efficient shooter you've cut out all these extra things that don't necessarily need to be there yeah everything is as simple and as compact and easy and repeatable as it possibly can be exactly that thumb being in an, an influence adds another variable that's another thing that can go wrong so you don't want to have that as an influence in there. And, you know, this is one thing that I've, I've thought about before, but, you know, it's, it's like if the launch of the space shuttle, you know how they have like those extra canisters that help it get up into the atmosphere mm -hmm. and then they fall away. Yeah. It's like you don't want those things hanging on as it gets into space and everything because they're going to cause issues with navigation and they're also going to Control. be a drag. Yeah. And so if you are, if you're, if you think about this assist hand, it needs to fall off like those extra boosters on the space shuttle yeah. as you're getting up towards the point where the ball is going to be released. And, you know, some people release it early, some people release, release it a little bit late, but it should not have an influence on where the ball 
uh, when the ball is being released. Exactly. And, you know, people will pop up and they'll say, oh, so-and-so does this and there's an influence or, you know, and they, and they have the, the flick of the thumb and blah. It's like, okay, but that's not an optimized way to do it. Right. They may have made it work for themselves, but if you're somebody that's trying to make your shot better or you're starting from the bottom and trying to build up to it, you don't want to add in these extra things sure. that make it more difficult yeah. or make it so that the repeatability of your shot is, is more hard to, to achieve. So eliminate stuff like that. Yeah, one of the things that we do to kind of emphasize this point is we have players <coughs> shoot with just one hand. We'll take yep. that assist hand and, <coughs> and we'll just drop it down out of the way. And what we find and what they find is this, is the ball tends to go straight and it goes yeah. straight to the bucket. Uh, unless you've got some pronation or something going. As soon as this hand gets in, if it's involved at the release point and that thumb flicks, then the ball is all over the place and we're not very accurate. Yeah. And so what happens is that after they shoot one-handed for a little while, the, the, the first report is this. I can't shoot one-handed. Well, yeah, you can. Well, my hands aren't very big. Hey, that's got nothing to do with it. Nope. Well, we'll show you how to get a hold of the basketball. And then when you go ahead and shoot at one hand, if your hand is going straight through the basket like you, you should be shooting it, the ball is going to be straight. And, 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 and also, when you think about like precision delivery of balls in sports, yeah. and we're talking about baseball and pitching the ball, or even, yeah. or even just you know, throwing a baseball around from, you know, from shortstop to first base or yep. from the outfield or whatever, or football where you're trying to hit a receiver or something like yeah. that. All of these are one-handed releases, there, and that's how you get that precision. Trying to do that with two hands is very difficult, and you don't see that much in sports, like maybe right. in soccer with the overhead pass, but that's more for getting the ball in a general area mm -hmm. and getting that extra you know, strength to get it there. Right. This is not about that. Shooting is about precision and repeatability. So... Uh, you know, we kind of gone a little bit f uh, on a tangent about this because we're talking about <laughs> fingers and everything. But, we go on tangents quite often. But the, the take home is, is that you want to use the optimal tools at your disposal to yeah. get the ball to the basket. And it's these two fingers that provide that to you. Yeah. Uh, now, this morning we had a, a, a young fellow who was shooting. And he's been <coughs> shooting with us for a while. Um, and he kept finishing with his finger right straight up in the air like this. So the ball was finishing off the last three fingers. And so, and it wasn't accurate. And so uh, I don't even really say much to him. I just hold up my hand like this and you're still number one. And he gets it right away. And then he'll make the correction so that he's getting both those first two fingers off the ball last. Yeah, you have to make sure that you are, are working on stuff when you're doing yeah. the form shooting drill yeah. and getting that dialed in. Yeah. Because you don't want to have the ball coming off one finger. You don't want to have it coming off these three. And you don't want that thumb in there yep, on true. the opposite hand. So those the, those are the finger important things that uh, we like to tell you about. Yeah. and Hope it helps. And it, here's the thing, too, is that we hopefully provide you guys with the background as to why that is. Yep. That's why we give those long explanations about that stuff. We don't just say, the ball should come off these two fingers and then walk out of the room. Or, yeah, yeah, or move, exactly. Or walk out of the room or whatever. Well, but, but, you know... There, there's reasoning behind it. Yeah, that's kind of how we approach all of the different skills. And we call it just a logically approaching uh, uh, how we shoot the basketball or how we dribble the basketball. It all has to do with logic. Does this work? Yes. Why does it work? Well, it works because if you do this, you get this response. If you do something else, you get some other response that maybe is not one that you really want. And when you guys are thinking about all these skills in basketball and, and even in life and stuff, yeah. You need to be applying critical thought to everything that you're doing. And everything should be purposeful and there should be a reason why you do yeah, it. Yeah. So many people see uh, Steph Curry or they see Ray Allen or they see Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan and they say, I'm going to shoot like that guy. Yeah, right. And they try to put all of that, you know, of those unique properties that each of those people have into right. their shot. And it's like, why? You haven't you haven't put any reasoning behind it. Is it just because they're successful with it? Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean that you are, you don't have their body. You don't have their, uh, necessary, uh, necessarily their, uh, drive. Athleticism. You, don't, you don't have their athleticism. You know, there's so many factors to that stuff. Yeah. So use the building blocks and yeah. build out. Okay. So let's, uh, okay. let's close that one down All right. and we'll jump into more questions. But if you guys have more questions about the fingers and things like that, let us know in yeah, the just, questions here. Just bring them up. Yeah. Um, before we get into uh, our question of the week, I want to tell you guys, 
make sure you go check out shotscience.com and you can find all of our gear like the shot science, shot science shirts uh, the training gear like the vertical jump box and some of the uh, uh, the stuff that we sell in there and that stuff helps support everything that we do yeah. and it would be awesome if you guys could check that stuff out maybe get some stuff also if you wear a team shot science shirt or if you are uh, working out with that training gear stuff if you put a hashtag team shot science um, using that stuff on Instagram or on Facebook or wherever we will uh, make sure that we see it. We will we'll try to comment and we will try to feature as many people as we possibly can because we love to see you guys doing that stuff. Yeah. Okay? Um, so check out shotscience.com. You can also get the all access pass where we do our super deep dive into tutorials and demonstrations and drills, even more so than what we do on YouTube. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, our question of the week is the same every week. And we want to make sure that we hit it every time we're here with you guys because we love to see where you guys are uh, but here's our question where are you located in the world yep and yeah. we uh, we asked a whole bunch of people already uh, or a whole bunch of people were telling us already when we first started but we want to know where you guys are from yep. we are from Santa Cruz California we are south of San Francisco on the coast we are but we want to know are you from Japan are you from uh, India are you from uh, Iceland Lithuania? <laughs> Lithuania. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we want to know where these pockets of basketball are in the world. Yeah. And so uh, let us know. Okay. Uh, and we'll shout some people out. Like ABC is from New York. From New York, yeah. Cool. Um, Andrew Donovan is from Salem, New Hampshire. And Pure Skills Gaming is from Puerto Rico. All right. Um, and let's see. We'll, we'll hit up a few more of you guys when we come back. We also hit up some people at the very beginning. So, um, okay. Let's see here. Let's find some questions. Uh, Kevin Vargas Gaming is asking us: Is using your middle finger on the release the best thing to do? Not, not by itself. We no, you, you. Casey's point a while ago is that if you have just one finger release, the ball is not stable on one finger, and you don't really have very much control. As soon as you add the second finger, you've got two points of contact now, and those two points of contact allow you to control where the ball goes if you use those two fingers. Yeah. Um, I will also tell you guys, if you have your questions, send them in now because now is the time to get them to get them asked. If you wait till the end, we can make no yeah. promises. Yeah, we have um, run out of time. Uh, Kevin Kolov is asking, so should the two finger uh, should so the two fingers should be pushed as the shot goes off and be emphasize be the emphasized part, or just flick the wrist and follow through with a loose but straight shot. Okay, there's a few things that we have a problem with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's just take and address the, this part. Uh, flicking the wrist and following through. Well, we don't really believe in flicking the wrist flicking or snapping, or snapping the wrist. Flicking snapping, no. Uh, what we feel is that we want it to be a very relaxed wrist and we want it to be a, a really uh, a flexible so the fingers are just really loose on the uh, on the uh, release of the ball. And, here, and that's because if you are doing a snap or a flick, you are creating tension in your, yeah. in your arm. I mean, you can feel it. Yep. And you do not want to apply that to the basketball because right. that will hurt your accuracy. A flop finish, you can do it without any real tension. Right. And the other thing that's real important with the relaxation of the wrist and fingers on the shot, and you find that, that many, many, many uh, um, professional players have that relaxed wrist follow through. Yep. And the reason for it that we teach it is this. We, we don't want to be, have the tension that Casey's talking about. But we also want to make sure that the ball spins slower. And, and so you may wonder, well, what difference does that make? Well, it makes a big difference. If I have a ball because I've snapped my wrist or I've flicked my wrist right at the end, the ball is going to spin faster. And a study that was done, and I can't cite it verbatim right now because it's been a while since I looked at it, but it was a study that was done in Florida maybe 10 years ago. And, and this person dis discovered that these were some elements of shooting that are very important. Number one is that when you shoot the ball uh, uh, from the free throw line or any place else for that matter, you want to have a, an arc on the ball that's going to uh, make your descent on the basket about a 45 degree angle. Some people teach a little higher than that. We happen to like to stay with that uh, 45 to 50. Okay, what happens is that we get that nice arc if, due to this uh, study is that that's going to give us the biggest basket to shoot to 
okay? And that's all, about, that's all about perspective of the right. ball. Right. And then when we talk about spinning the basketball, this study said that from the free throw line, the optimum rotation should be about two complete rotations. Well, that's pretty slow, okay? And so the reason for it is this, is that... Physics. <laughs> The reason for that is, is here, that the faster we spin the basketball on the release, the more energy that we capture in the ball due to that rotation. Yep. And when that runs into something solid, like either the backboard or the rim, all that or a lot of that energy is released and it creates a long rebound. And we, okay. don't, we don't want a long rebound. No. We want the ball to stick around and die. Exactly. And so what we do is, and you, you'll find that Curry does this and, and uh, uh, Clay. Thompson, uh, yeah, that that wrist comes through and it's really pretty relaxed. And you'll find that uh, uh, Durant is pretty much the same way. Or you way. look at all the old Michael Jordan in slow motion videos, yeah. same thing. Yeah, and, and you can see that ball turning slowly. Okay, and so what do you expect to get out of that? Here's what you get. When the ball hits on the rim and it's got a nice arc, it tends to bound upward more often if a flat shot is also going to be a long rebound. Okay, so we teach that arc for another reason. <clears throat> we want the bigger target, and I'm not going to go into all of that, but we also want to take and have one where the ball, when it hits the rim, it tends to stay around the basket, and hopefully it will bound up, but not very high up. When we have less rotation on the ball, what happens is it's going to be a little short rebound, and that thing has still got a great chance to go in the basket. Yeah, and okay. you don't want a knuckle ball because no. that doesn't give the ball a very good. Uh, uh, it doesn't keep it stable in flight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you do want to have just a tiny bit. So yeah. when it hits the rim or the backboard, it stops it because that backspin is going in the opposite uh, uh, opposite. Uh, direction than the ball is going so that it hits the rim and it dies there it and that's actually what happens too is that when if it's turning this way and it hits the rim oftentimes that uh, spin will reverse itself if it's spinning slow that's great because it goes in the hoop and you know that's what people call shooters touch yep. and it really makes the ball kind of have fingers and stay around the yep. rim yep. because you don't want it to just hit the thing and just go flying off because that doesn't give it a second chance yeah. to go in yeah so, well, that gives you some good rebound information right there too. Yeah, if you're a rebounder, you definitely you want to you want that thing to smack off the rim or the yeah. backboard. You and see that to... thing and it's going to the basket and the, and it's just a blur because it's spinning so fast. You know that it's not going to be rebounding close to the basket. It's going to probably be away from the basket, maybe as much as eight or ten feet. Okay, and and, and Kevin, also you're talking about uh, you, you use the terminology pushed when you're talking about these two fingers and things. We do not, no. uh, you know, you should not use words like pushed or shoved or anything like that when it comes to shooting. It's you just, want to talk about elevating your release and elevating the ball and mm -hmm. flop finish. Flop finish. Nothing should be forced. And when, when I, we see the words like pushed and flicked Flick. and snapped, ooh, that, those yeah. are words that make us, it, it's almost like we're chewing on aluminum foil because it's just <laughs> like, eesh. Uh, okay. we, we really want you to make sure that everything is relaxed and elevated. Right. Um, so make sure that's kind of on your vocabulary list okay. there. Um, Patanel says, can you give any tips or exercises to make your release faster? Oh, okay. That, hold, hold that, on. Let that's, me, a, let me... that's a great question. Go ahead. You take it. Okay. So, so many people ask us questions and, and, you know, every week on all of our videos and all that stuff, people ask us, how do I make my release faster? How do I get that quick release? Blah, 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 blah. That is not really the best approach. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your shot is optimized as much as possible. Cut all the uh, non the the unnecessary variables out, so there's no hitches, dips, you know, dingle dangle do whatever. It's all cut out. Um, and so your shooting mechanics are as refined as they possibly can be. And efficient. And efficient. Efficient. And at that point, what you want to do is you want to do two things. One is to learn how to create space because creating space will get you the space that you need yeah. to get that shot off. Yeah. If you're rushing your release, you will, again, add tension to your shot. And, and inaccuracy comes yeah. with that too. And inaccuracy. You eventually reach a point of diminishing returns when you're trying to rush your shot. So you might be trying to rush it and get it off. Well, 
that gets to a point where the accuracy is going to go down. So why would you even take the shot? So if you learn to create space and separate and, and get shots that are open and good looks, that will translate to better shots, higher percentage, and you don't have to rush a release. Efficiency is, yeah. is and the key. So yeah. the other, the second part plays into the mechanics a little bit, but that is getting your footwork down. Right. Footwork is the way that you generate rhythm. It is also how you create space, and it's also how you turn your horizontal momentum into vertical momentum. Right. Um, and so you need to get your footwork right, and you can actually take care of almost half of your shooting mechanics before you even catch the ball or pick the ball up off the dribble by getting the right footwork into your shot. Footwork is so, so important in shooting. So you rush your feet, but you don't rush your release. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I would just say to, to kind of cap that off is this, is that if you were being contested and maybe people getting their face, uh, hands in your <coughs> face or your finger, their fingers on the ball, that was not a shot you should be taking. And the reason it's not a shot is because it's a contested shot where they direct the ball to go someplace else. And so Casey's point there about creating space is really important one if we're going to get the shot off. Now, one of the things that is a time eater uh, is dipping the basketball once you catch it, yep. where you take the ball and you bring it down toward your midsection and then you bring it back up. There's a couple of elements there that are kind of not so good. Number one, it takes a bunch of time for that to happen. That benefits the defender more than it's going to benefit you. And the other is you place the ball in what we call the box, which is yeah. a, an area from our chin to our thighs, as wide as our body. When the ball is in there, the other defender can get their hand on the basketball. That's one of the things that makes uh, Iguodala such an incredible defender is he catches people who are def uh, uh, dipping the ball down and pops it out of the hand yep. and very seldom ever gets called for any fouls on it either. So And it's just, it, all, it is, all it helps you do is get rhythm. But yeah. you have another way to do it that yeah. actually is even better yeah, exactly. because it takes care of so many uh, boxes that you can tick. Exactly. And uh, It's Dark Gamer says, no damage. Dips. No dips. That's right on. No dips. Okay, let's hit up a few of these people. Uh, we have uh, It's Dark Gamer, who's from Seattle, Washington. All right, all right. We have TJ543345 from Greenland. Greenland, all that right. That might be the first person from Greenland that we've ever seen. Exactly. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Thamir13 is from Poland. All right. Oh, he says, just kidding. He's from oh. New York. Thanks. Oh, all right. Don't throw us those curveballs. Got Come us. On. Got to read down a couple of. Um, <laughs> Patanel is from Moldova, and they say, I don't even think you know it. We've heard of Moldova. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I'm living in Italy now. All Very right. cool. Um, and then we have William Mercado, who's from Fort Worth, Texas. Anthony Nunez from New York. Um, cool. You guys keep sending in where you guys are from. We love to see that. Um, let's get back into some of these questions, though. Um, this one is from Gene Doty. Tangishaka, who says, I have a shot that's between one motion and two motion, but my coach said I should change it because my accuracy is above the varsity point guard and I'm going to be a freshman. Should I change it? Okay. Oh. When we hear about one motion and two motion shots, that is somebody else's uh, terminology that they're yeah. trying to apply to this stuff. Right. Here's the thing. Your shot should have no sticking points, no stopping points, no... Uh, kind of opposing motions or anything like that. And when we think of a two motion shot, a lot of that is translated into the person gets it into the shooting, uh, you know, the shot pocket and they either extend and their legs don't connect to their upper body or there's a, a hitch or a stopping point. Mm -hmm. And that is all bad. Um, you know, it, it is not a good way to translate power and, and lift into your shot right. uh, because you'll lose it at that sticking and stopping yeah. point. So we are big proponents. Uh, we don't even like using that terminology. Mm -hmm. It is a efficient shot. Yep. Fluid from your feet to follow through, and there is no stopping, sticking, or hitching involved. Yeah, exactly right. You know, one of the things that we don't talk enough about as coaches is where our power base is. And, you know, if I would ask you, where's your power base as a shooter, you'd probably tell me, okay, my shoulders, and oh yeah, the rest of my body, the lower body. Well, that's true. 
But what we don't oftentimes realize is this, is that the shoulders and arms and hands are responsible for only about 20% of the power that we generate as shooters. And uh, what happens is that that means that we have about 80% of our power that is from our midsection uh, down through our legs. Yeah, your lower chain, your legs yeah. and kind of your core muscles. Exactly. And one of the things that we hap uh, that happens is that oftentimes we'll straighten those legs up and we haven't yet started our shooting motion. And so all we have left, because once the legs are straight, they provide no more power after that, then all we have is that 20%. So we shoot the balls uh, short and probably flat what happens is this is that when we connect the shot the the power base from below to the stroke this is where you're gonna find that you're shooting those balls that we refer to as effortless and that means they were just without any uh, real uh, uh, rush or push it's right there where we want it to be and here's how you do it as the legs beginning to fish or I'm sorry beginning to finish their extension the arm is already into the shooting motion and so we get that power that's generated by the lower body and it carries right into the stroke itself. That's really what you want to happen. Yeah, well, here, here's, a, here's another way to think of that too, okay. is that if you have a shooting mechanic that is two springs, one is the big power spring that is on the bottom uh -huh. and it extends and then it stops and then you have this other spring that's supposed to release, that's not really the way that you want that all to right. happen. You want it to all be one big spring so that yeah. it starts from the bottom and it all flows up towards the top. And exactly. by the time that you get to the, the release, it is a very relaxed and tension relieved sh uh, release of the ball, uh, right? Yes. Let me, let me underline a couple things here that we think are really important. Number one, how do you know when this is happening to you? Well, here's what you find out really quickly. The shot will almost always be flat and it will almost always be short of the basket. And you can feel it. Uh, and this is a question I ask uh, our, our students on a daily basis. How did that feel? Well, it felt like it was really underpowered. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that I didn't get my legs connected to the shot. Okay, and so now let's do that. And as soon as they begin to kind of get that working, then I said, well, how does that one feel? Oh, that one, that one felt really good. You mean effortless? Yes, that's exactly what it feels like. Yeah, and you know, uh, it's really one of those things where you want to make your shot efficient, and you're asking here if, if uh, you should change it. Well, uh, you have to weigh that a little bit, like is it in season? That makes it a little rough to try yeah. to work on changing your shot completely. Um, but you know, if you see benefit in, in changing your shot, you should do that in the off season, yeah. and you in can. Season, it yeah. just takes a lot of, of, of kind of dedicated repetition, and you can get it to happen. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're kind of saying oh, you still shoot better than varsity point guards and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's great. But, you know, are you satisfied with that? Because, you know, if it's me, I'm going to try to be as as well prepared and optimized as I possibly can be. And if that's, you know, only being as good as a varsity point yeah. guard, I mean, OK. <laughs> uh, so you, you just kind of need to weigh that stuff. But you should try to make your shot as efficient as possible. Yeah. Drop this one motion, two motion stuff that uh you know it's it's really you and here's the other thing too quickly is that you need to think of your lower body as kind of like the power source that's where you know the uh the the rockets are where you're trying to yeah. get as much power out as you can and your upper body needs to be the delivery system and you can't use power to deliver the basketball because that isn't going to give you accuracy right. It's all the fine focus that you need to get the ball to the basket. So sure. you shouldn't be heaving or using your upper body or anything like right. that to get the ball there. That should really just be the delivery system. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that was a rant. Yeah. Um, How about ABC there? Yeah, ABC is asking, can you guys tell me if it's normal for a coach to run plays and tryouts? You know um – Personally, I don't see the benefit of that uh, because how are you going to know how to run plays when, unless he is going to teach you how to run plays and even then you probably are not going to be very effective with them. It's not something I would do. I'm more concerned to tell you the truth about these kind of elements. What kind of effort do these players exhibit when we're going through practice? Can, have they got ball skills? Can they use their right and left hand pretty much equally? 
How, what kind of passers are they? That's probably the area that I find most disturbing, especially in girls basketball, is the passing usually is not very good because I, I guess they just don't spend time on it. <coughs> but those are some of the elements, and we want to know how you shoot the basketball. Yeah, well, here, here's the thing, is that you need to show up prepared. Yeah. You know, so many people get so caught up in tryouts and what's going to happen at tryouts yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And it's like if you are prepared as a basketball player, you shouldn't worry about any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's what coaches want. They want a player to show up that is a complete package, and that includes skills, attitude, um, and determination, and effort, and all those things. But uh, we should refer them to our uh, make the team videos. Yeah, too. go to the how to make the team videos yeah. that we have, yeah. and you can you can see that that you know you should be able to show up, and the coach could do any goofy thing. They could have you, uh, you know, just <laughs> do a layup line the whole time, uh-huh. and and that could be a tryout. Coaches will do different things in different places for different reasons, and you never know what 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 you're going to see. I mean, tryouts can be anything. It's really up to the coach. They could have you come up and give uh, you know a speech on why you should be on the team. That could be the whole tryout. Yeah. You know, it really it, there is no normal tryout. It's it's really could just be anything. Well, another thought that just kind of flashed in my brain too. This may be something that's just rumor that's rolling around and it confuses you. It confuses others and they're thinking, well, you know, I don't, I don't know how to run those plays. And the thing is, is that uh, be prepared, like Casey said, for everything. Go there and participate to the best of your uh, ability. Even if he has your, maybe he gives you two or three little running uh, play motions that he wants you to run. Just do the best you can with him. Okay? Yeah, I mean, you know, just go in there and don't get flustered about yeah, it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can guarantee you that, you know, coaches will, I mean, I've, I've had a tryouts where they had us doing three-man weave and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, even though I knew how to do that, there was a lot of guys there that didn't know how to do that three-man weave thing. And it just turned into a fiasco. So just worry about yourself yeah. and, and relax and just try to understand mm-hmm. what they're asking you to do and do that to the best of your abilities. Yep. Um, it's mm-hmm. not worth going, oh, my God, they're going to ask us to do these <laughs> these these plays. You should be okay. Um, okay. This one is from Batman Robin, who says how to be a versatile player. It's got to work on your all-around skills. Yeah, you got to work on your skills and not just a few either. If you worry about positions and stuff like that, you're going to be yeah. in trouble. Yeah, just really focus on, on having good shooting mechanics, good ball skills, <coughs> uh, good footwork in all elements of the game, whether it's offense or defense. Those things are all really important. That makes yep. you a well-rounded player. Um, okay, this one is from Andrew Donovan who says, how should your hands be spread apart? We talked about that a little bit, but it's really, you want to just have a comfortable grip where your thumb is spread in opposition of your pinky. So these guys right here, if you're trying to just palm it, that's not good. But if you just have a gentle kind of uh, grip on it, that's really what you want. I'm not, I mean, I can take these fingers off and it still is supported. So Show the, the uh, uh, palm flat, Casey, and the thumb in. What? What often happens, we don't want to have the, the thumb alongside the basketball because when the ball is down here on the heel or palm of your hand, you don't have much there in the way of nerve endings that really can help you. Those are out there on your finger pads. Or control. And, yeah. And, you know, you worry about having small hands. Well, it doesn't get smaller than your palm, you yeah. know. And so by spreading this thumb out like this, we, it, that gets the palm up or the ball up off the palm. And we call this the one finger test. When you spread that thumb out and you can stick one finger in there, you're good. And that also allows you to grip the basketball. Not hard, but it gives you control of the basketball. All right, this is just a quick aside thing. Okay. If you guys want to sponsor the live show or if you want to get a question answered for sure, you can hit the little uh, dollar sign down here in the chat, and that just is a super chat that really helps us out. So if yeah. that's something that you would like to do, please do it. Yeah. Um, and we would very much appreciate you yeah. and shout you out. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Renzo Gutierrez is saying, more fingers. Well, what do you want to know? How just many you got? I yeah. Mean, well, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, you only need these two, and the third one can kind of play in the part of that if, you, if it's longer finger and maybe it – uh, that's okay as long as it doesn't affect the flow of the basketball. You just don't want, you don't need those two. What you need is 
these three, if I get myself located yeah. right here. Yeah, we're seeing um, our mirror image, so it's yeah. hard for us to get. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Patanel is asking, Curry releases with his middle finger, right? Nope. Uh, I think it's more of these two. It I is. mean, you can watch it in that super slow motion. And stop and think about this. Most people's second finger or the middle finger is a little longer than their index finger. So the first ball, finger that's going to probably come off the ball is going to be the shorter finger, and the other one might be on it for a moment after that, but it does not affect really what happens with the basketball. Well, if you look at the way that the ball releases as you get to the top of your shot, though, your, your pointer finger really, it, they're basically about even yeah. because of just the way that your hand ergonomically, when it gets to the top of the shot, that's how it will come off. Mm -hmm. So it really is those, those two fingers. Yeah. And, you know, go look at the slow motion video. You yeah. can see. Um, Pure Skills Gaming says how to get more vertical. Um, go Work check out. It. Well, yeah. Go check out <laughs> our vertical jump training stuff at shotscience.com. Right. And we have that in the all access area. Um, it's a bunch of training stuff. And then you can also get the, the jump box, which is a vertical jump training kit. And that has all the... Uh, kind of exercise and um, training specific tools that we think are important to help you guys with that. I have a question on that, Casey. Uh, there's <coughs> also a workout schedule that go. Does that go along with the jump box? Yeah, you can use it with the jump box. I mean, it, but it's, do you have to order that separately? Or does that come with the jump box or what? You got to get it separately. I mean, okay. it, it, there, you can you can get you can get the jump box itself, and uh, you can use that stuff to train yourself without any uh, you know program but right. we also have a program available too. right and it's a three-month program which is really good yep um let's see here batsy plays it says hi there i'm 21 years old and going into my second season in adult basketball i struggled last season defending veteran players last year who are stronger and tougher than me any tips just, you, just keep playing yeah you know one of the things that happens to us is um as we get older and we involve ourselves more in, in games or in play, let's say, is the better you get. I had a student that was here this morning and one of the things that, that I asked his father who often plays with him uh, when they go out to play, I said, uh, it looks like he's developing a lot more self-confidence in himself when he comes here. And he said, yes, he is. And I said, does that carry over when he is playing? He says, yes, he's getting much more self-confident. He's willing to try and do more things than he would before. And so just playing more and involving yourself a little bit more, you'll find that your game begins to pick up. Yeah, and you have to also not get into the whole trying to uh, be like aggro and yeah. and and uh, try to use your, your uh, body too much. Because some people get into that, and it's like they try to be super um, ag you know, aggressive. Physical. To, physical to the point where it's not uh, beneficial to you. So don't worry about that stuff, yeah. and try to work on your finesse game a little bit. And if you're worried about playing defense on those players, play off of them a little bit. Yeah. Let them uh, Don't let them catch the ball in the first place, but once they have the ball, play off them a little bit. And if they're going to do anything, they're going to have to shoot. And a lot of times in adult leagues, let's be honest, the shooting is not that great. Yeah, um, so make them take their shot. Make them prove that they can even take the shot mm -hmm. before you get up on them on that. Um, but play off, and if they try to attack, then you beat them to the spot and stop that attack. And then they'll have to change directions to stop or they'll mow you over. And so that's really kind of how you can kind of get around and get in those guys' heads on how to stop them. Exactly. Um, look at that one right there. You we have, uh, that. Yeah, right is this there. somebody we know? L LA157 Mary 4 says, hello from your back deck. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> is that one of your students or something? Uh-huh. Um, uh, we did some of these people already. Um, let's see. Did we run backwards or something? Um, Francisco from California 2-3 says, what's the best hand placement? Well, that's a good question. You know, one of the things that, that we do, and the hand that's going to be your <coughs> shooting or delivery hand, we like for it to take and be located on the ball um, so that your index finger is pretty much it, like we talk in terms of the ball being a clock face. And we want the index finger to be somewhere around 12 o'clock or maybe Once, as far as 1 o'clock. Uh, uh, either one of those work really pretty but, good. But that's when, when you finish it. When you, well, when, when you, you, when you're, when you when have you get, the basketball. When you have yeah. the basketball here in the, sh in the shop uh, kind of uh, set points, you, want the, your, you can have your hand actually a little bit turned out like that so that you bit. see this Y-shaped. 
a like yoke. this. And that's one of the things that, that Coach Tom calls a yoke because uh, you aren't trying to force your hand behind. When I do that, oh, I feel tension here. I feel it in my shoulder. And that is not good. And I can't even really get my thumb spread. But if you turn your hand a little bit out like that, you'll see that you have this Y shape. And that's only there for when it's in the set point. Once you start to elevate your hand, your arm will naturally turn over. You can't see it here because I'm in this small thing, but it will naturally turn over so that you do finish with these fingers kind right. of at 12 and 1. Right. Well, let's talk about the assist hand in that location because that's one that's oftentimes missed. Now, just hold it right there. Oftentimes, we'll find players who have their hand out in front of the basketball like that. And you don't want that because that will impede your stroke because you can't really get, sometimes get it off the ball soon enough. So it wants to be right on the side. And one of the things that we do is, is have this so that this, this is like this, these fingers are on a pane of glass and they're not really affecting anything in the ball so that when you're ready to oh, no. shoot. See, see, look, I can, I can take the ball and I can just move it off and that hand doesn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's really about all you want because when it starts to grip the basketball or pinch the basketball, that's when you're probably going to have inaccuracy in your shot. I mean, it's really like that hand is only there to get the ball into the set point. Once you go into the set point, it really serves no serviceable service. That is the reason we call that hand the assist hand because it aids or assists in getting ready for shoot uh, to shoot the ball and then it gets out of the way. Yep. Um... Uh, Andrew Donovan says, should your hands be spread apart? Yeah, I mean, yeah. to a degree. I mean, yeah. you can see that the one hand is on the bottom of the ball and this hand is on the side. So yeah. you don't want them here. You don't want them here. You don't want it up here. You want it like this. Yeah, and we often hear people who uh, talk about having uh, gripping the ball so that your thumbs create a T. Uh, that's not necessary at so, all. Yeah. What we really like is having this hand over here on the side of the basketball and not even thinking about to, that kind of stuff. To really even dial that in, too, you can take the ball here, and you should be able to hold it without any real effort, yep. just like this in the shot in the uh, set point. I don't know why I keep saying shot, but yep. the set point. And this hand, you can take this hand, make it into a karate chop hand like mm -hmm. this, and it could sit right here, and that's all it needs to do. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. And you can work on your that. shooting there. And then you can eventually get to the point where you just have a gentle touch on it, but it really should not do anything but be on the side of the ball. Yeah. It, you don't have to do any of these T things or do anything like that. And that's that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Ed Ann says, is it good for turning the ball while going up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, if you're I'm thinking that maybe they're thinking about turning it on the way up. You want to have that ball in. It, and when you catch it, it comes right into your set point. Uh, and you want to have your hands and everything ready to go. One of the things that we often have questions on is this, is uh, they want to finger the ball so they get their fingers on the seams of the basketball. You know, our response to this is, is this. Most basketballs are wrinkled. And, any, and, it's, and it's, it's a perfect round object. And any place you put your fingers on that basketball is going to give you a good grip. You do not have to be on the seams. Yeah, I mean, and that, that takes times to finger the ball and find the seams to get ready to shoot it, too. That, and you, you don't have that much time. But that's, here's the other thing about that. I and mean, you hear this all the time. You know, p people say, get your fingers right here on the, on the seams and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you know, when you throw a, a football, you want to get your hands on the laces right here. But, you know, one of the things that, that my dad taught us from early on is that that is just one more thing you have to do and worry yeah. about yeah. to get your shot off. You will benefit yourself so much more if you can shoot the shot like this, but you can also shoot it like this or like that or like this or wherever you catch the ball so that when you catch it, you don't have to go to get it in the right spot. Exactly. And the ball being round and, and dimpled like it, the skin of it is, it's easy to grip it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those mental things. You yeah. don't want to get yourself stuck into that because it becomes a habit. And when it's a habitual thing, good luck breaking that because that's yeah. that's so much harder than if you went into it not having that be a thing. Exactly. And I know that you know we would go to basketball camps or whatever, and there would be the coach there that says, okay, you want to get your hands here and put it right on the seam so that your pointer finger and index finger are in that seam. And it's like, ah. The ball is round. You can you can put your fingers anywhere on it, and it should be uh, have the same properties 
basically because the ball is so big. It's not like yeah. a baseball where the seams have so much of an influence on yeah. the flight of the ball. Yeah. On a basketball, it doesn't really affect it that much. Yeah. Okay, so if you guys have your questions, we I'm going to tell you right now, we are running out of time, and I know that there is a whole long list of stuff that we have not gotten to. If you really need your question answered, you got you to do the super chat and hit the, uh, the dollar sign here at the bottom. That is the only way we can for sure get to your stuff, okay. but we're going to do our best to get through a few here. Um, Batman Robin says, how to set plays better as a point guard and make the right decision at the right time. Thanks, guys. I'm improving as a player uh, week after week because of you guys. That's, well, that's awesome great to hear. to hear. We appreciate that so much. And that really is our goal is to help you as much as okay, we can. So how to set plays better as a point guard and make the right decision at the you right know, time? That, that's a really tough question because uh, we don't know what those plays uh, look like. We Usually uh, coaches will script the play they want you to run and they'll <laughs> – I want you to take and, and make a couple of dribbles right, change and go to the left and make that pass out to the wing. We don't know what that is. And so it's a really impossible for us to tell you what is the best way to go. Here's, here's something I think, number one is going to be experience, always. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number two is this, understand why you are doing the things that you're doing for those plays. Yeah. And also as a point guard, it's good to know everything that everybody else is doing, oh, yeah. all aspects of who, yeah. who is going where and what and why. And when you start to do that, you'll understand, oh, well, that guy is setting that screen so that we can free up that guy, and then I'll be able to see him for that opportunity, and I'll be able to do this. Yeah. And you'll know where the opportunities are. You'll also know where you can kind of improv a little bit and go off the rails, because one of the things that, that as you become, become a higher level basketball player is that you shouldn't follow the plays or the rails to the T every single time you execute because you're going to see an opportunity come up that you need to take uh, and, and, and you know take advantage of. So you don't want to you know keep on the rail but then pass up the open layup or whatever you know. Um, uh, so well, let's back up for just a second on that. What Casey's talking about is running on rails. Uh, you know this is a terminology that we use for uh, running offensive plays. Coaches will tell you. Uh, make that pass to the right wing, go down and screen the post. He's going to flash up. Uh, and the guy <laughs> that has the basketball is going to take and pass the ball to the post. He's going to reverse it to the other side. That's what we call running on rails, okay? You, there are certain rails that you need to be on. And Casey's point is one that we think is really important. Learn to play. Yeah, learn to play. And what that means is there are times when you can take advantage of the defense if you jump off the rails. Example here, you've made the same, uh, that person made that same cut, same cut over and over and over, and maybe it's you. And then they're overplaying that pass that's supposed to come to you. And so you come up and you make that little fake away and you go to the basket and you get a freebie there because you jumped off the rails. I think that's certainly okay. That, and that doesn't mean going in and playing free jungle yeah. ball or anything like yeah. that. That means being smart about it yeah. and knowing, okay, well, here's the play, but I see this opportunity here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the, and the idea is to score baskets. Yeah, and here's the yeah. takeaway for that question. Learn why everything is happening. Yeah. Be your own best coach. Learn why. Don't just learn the rails. Yep. Learn why you are doing those things. Yep. Okay. Because because coaches put plays together, and there are classic plays and stuff like fist and, and horns and all that stuff, that if you learn why those different things are happening or the triangle offense, I mean, everything is do, being done for a reason. Yep. And it's not just because it looks cool with the X's and O's. Okay? Um Anthony Nunez says, how can we get higher arc so my shot doesn't go straight to the hoop? So your shot oh. doesn't go straight to the hoop? You Oh, you see, you don't want a flat shot. How yeah. does he get high? Quick, quick answer on okay. how he gets higher arc. One of the things that we teach everybody is that when you start your stroke, we want to take and finish with the stroke, with the elbow higher than our eyes, and that's going to give you a nice stroke. And so you can always check that. Is my elbow higher than my eyes? If, and if you shoot the ball, come out here, and that elbow is eye level or lower, you can count on the fact that the shot is going to be flat. You need to get that arc by elevating the elbow, finishing higher than the eyes. Okay, Francisco from CA23 says, where should someone look at before shooting the ball? At the net, backboard, top of the backboard, or hoop? Uh, okay. Quick answer to this yeah, one too. The quick answer is we want to look right in the middle of the basket. 
we don't tell tell people to shoot for the back rim or shoot for the front rim or anything like that. We want them to, the target is to lay that ball right in the middle of that nest. That's what we refer to that basket with a netting around it. That is the nest. And we're trying to put the ball Pret- right there. Pretend like you have a dartboard and you've laid the dartboard right on top. You need to hit the bullseye each time. Yeah. You're not aiming for the black rim out mm-hmm. around the outside. You're not trying to aim for the backboard that is not even part of the target. Yeah. You're aiming for that bullseye yeah. on the basket. And if people are telling you to aim for these things that, that you know these things that you can see, that that's not what you're going to hit, or not what you want to hit. Because if you hit those, like the back rim or the front rim, the ball's not going to go in. So be More, able to visualize that bullseye target in the nest. Right. More often than not, when you shoot a shot that hits the back rim because that's where they told you to aim, it's not going to go in the basket. Yeah. It's going to pop it right back out again. And so we don't. We call that a false target. Front rim, false target. We want to put that thing right in the middle of that hole. That hole is 18 inches in diameter on the inside. And so that's a big target when you stop and think about it. <laughs> okay, Denvi Star, our buddy from Moscow, says, good talk, coaches. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for always being All here. Right. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, and then we, we had Kevin Kolov. We asked an, or answered some of his questions earlier, and he was using the terminology like flick and snap. Mm-hmm. or I think it was flick and push. Yeah. Uh, he says, don't worry, guys. My shot is relaxed, just not the correct terminology. Thanks for the tips. Okay, awesome. great, great, well, great, great. maybe All try right. to work those other term terms yeah. in there and uh yeah we know that you got it all under control yeah. kevin you're here all the time too um bulldog says how much hand checking is acceptable when defending quick players one-on-one whatever you can get away with yeah. is really what it's all about and and hand checking oftentimes you can kind of mask it a little bit it's when you open up your hand to a person you, you gotta see it so they can when you see open it. up your hand what we really teach is we want to close the hand and maybe we get that on the hip uh, and we can kind of control or uh, defend them that way. Um, let's see. Uh, this one's from Russell Westbrook. Oh, Russ is here again this week. How about that? <laughs> he says, how do I keep my guide hand straight? Because when I shoot threes, I always have my guide hand pushing the ball too. Well, it's... It, got to gotta break it down. Well, it is. You know, that's all muscle memory. And that's the way you have put this together at some point in your basketball history. So now what you need to do is get to a point where you uh, now are going to take that hand off and take it off and off and off and off so that that becomes muscle memory over what you've been doing for a long time. Hope that helps you. Yeah. uh, I think ABC or somebody was asking, how do you donate or how do you do the super chat? I think you just click on the, the, the button on the below the chat that is the dollar sign and if you do that we will be very thankful for you and yeah. we will definitely shout you out but uh that's that's basically how you do that yeah. um or you can go to shotscience.com and you can get a shirt or yeah. you can get some training gear we we really appreciate you guys just uh kind of checking all that stuff out and, yeah. and you know repping team shot science is super cool for us yeah. um um kevin samara says why do i look slow when i film myself practicing you know, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure I could answer that. I think part of it is it's weird to watch yourself do anything on film. It's yeah. weird to hear your voice on re- on a recording. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, I know in the moment you think that you're doing these things a certain way, yeah. but it may not be the case. Well, um, you know, in my experience over years and years of, of watching videos of players, I was all you're, you're always deceived by the speed and quickness of players unless they're really out of sight. Uh, and one of the things I learned a long time ago is I'm looking more for what they are doing and not work, uh, worrying too much about their speed because I can't tell that just by looking on a video. Yeah, okay. Uh, this one is from Retro Movies and Games. It says, hey guys, I'm six foot in the seventh grade right now and I play center, but I'm worried that I won't grow more and have to play guard in the future when I'm not particularly good at guard. Okay. Okay, so you, the, class, the classic answer that we would tell anybody and every day, everybody, and we do this most every week, Worry about becoming a better all-around basketball player before you start thinking about positions because you're right. You might be six feet now, and in three years, you might be six two. And so one of the things you want to do is prepare for whatever comes down the line for you. It's possible that at six feet now, you might be six six by the time you get to be 16, 17 years old, but you don't know that. And so prepare yourself to be a good ball handler, a good shooter, a good defender, and having all the elements of the game instead of learning how to play with your back to the basket and not be able to dribble the ball very effectively. And the, and the other okay. thing is you become being, you become more valuable as a player regardless yeah. if you become more versatile. Exactly. Because you may, okay, let's say that you are six foot now. What if you grow to six foot eight 
and you get to keep playing center. And then you also have these skills on top of that where you can step away from the basket. And, and you shoot, can shoot a yeah. three-pointer. Yeah. You can actually make a free throw, which for big guys, that becomes a huge, huge. A game changer. Yeah. If you can do that because people have to respect you, they can't just foul you and send you to the line. Yeah. Um, if you have all these things kind of taken care of, then you can do anything. Yeah. And it makes you that much more valuable and deadly to, to uh, you know your coach and to the opposition. Right. Um, okay, so let me uh, let me hit this one real quick. Um, who, where did it go? Uh, one Mo Gain 23 says, what to do about teammates that are haters? They get mad when I miss, but when they miss shots or when I make them, they say nothing. They just hate. It's very common with different teammates. Well, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. They are who they are. Uh, and they're probably very, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Insecure. Um, well, insecure. And they're probably threatened by your presence in certain manners, too. And that's why they take that particular viewpoint. Too bad, uh, Ed, that maybe your coaching uh, coach is haven't really done anything to respond to that because coaches are really <coughs> aware, usually, of what's going on between members of their team. And uh, if they were really up to speed, it would be up to them to address, uh, hey, this is what's going on, and we're not liking it, we're not accepting it and what needs to change or there are going to be some changes made. And and uh, that's about the only thing that you can really do. Well, he, you he, can get in their face, and that just makes the situation worse. Okay? He, he, here's, here's the thing, is that, and this will help you in life in general, is that you need to learn to just let things go, yeah. especially when they have nothing to do with you. Yeah. And people that do that kind of crap, those are the people that get forgotten in 10 years. Yeah. Nobody yeah. even remembers any particulars about those kind of people because yeah. they're jerks. And so... You know, people don't want to remember jerks for any good reason. So just if they say stuff to you, let it go right off your back. You can smile back at them. Yeah. They hate that. Yeah. And then you just worry about you. Yeah. If you get into their game, that will only hurt you. But if you just let things go, nobody, those type of guys, they cannot handle the ice cold killer. <laughs> yeah, like right. they just cannot. Yeah. And so just keep getting better and you will surpass them. And who cares what anybody has to say about exactly. you? Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, this one is from Leonardo Namoski, who says, what program should I try to improve my vertical? Well, we would hope that you would try the shot science program. Right. You know, you can see that on our vertical jump videos on our channel. You can get the vertical jump handbook, which is a 12 uh, week program that will help you guys build off of that. Then you can also get the vertical jump, uh, the jump box, the vertical jump training kit that has all the exercise equipment in there that you need to do that program or that if you just want to use that stuff, it's good to have that as well. And you can do the all access pass on our shotscience.com page where we have a whole section there on developing your athleticism and developing your vertical jump. So there's a lot of stuff that we've put out on that topic. And hopefully uh, if that's something that you're interested in, you'll check out all of those different avenues. Um, okay. So guy, oh, we got Oli who says, "Hey, I'm I'm not in the UK at the moment. I'm actually in Florida, but still tuning in. Awesome! All right, and you're all right. here all the time too, man. Yeah. There's we got some dedicated people all that right. show up that, regardless. That so cool. So um, cool. Yeah. So okay. So guys, um, we're gonna have to cut it off right there. But we thank you so much for being here. If we didn't right. get to your questions, it's not because we don't like you. It's because we ran out of time. Um, if you uh, want to get some shot science gear, go to shotscience.com. We love to shout out people and feature people on our pages that wear our shirts and we use our training gear. So use the hashtag Team Shot Science once you do that. Before you go, make sure you answer our question, uh, which is... Where are you located in the world? Yeah, where are you from the world? We want to know where you guys are, are on the map uh, because that makes us happy to see how far the team stretches. But also, our second question is... What should our second question be? Uh, <laughs> what is one shooting aspect that you need to work on this week? Yeah, that, that would be really cool. So are, are your shots a little flat and you need to get more elevation? Are you elbow uh, out. working on getting your elbow in the right position? Are you working on getting uh, maybe your shot off faster or getting it more efficient? Um, are you working on shooting off the dribble or shooting off the pass? What are What is one aspect of shooting you're going to work on this week? Let us know in the chat or in the comments. Um, make sure you follow us on all our social media stuff. We are Shot Science on everything. Check out shotscience.com, and uh, we will see you guys next time. All right. Thank you, guys.